Connecting retro video games to modern TVs can really be a whole lot of a crapshoot. A lot of times you wind up with crap, other times you can wind up with something pretty decent. Hey everybody, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thank you for stopping by and checking out our episode today. I really do appreciate it. One of the things I want to know from you here today, before we get started behind me, this is Doki Doki Panic, which went on to become Super Mario Brothers 2. I want to know, have you had a chance to play it, and which do you prefer? Super Mario Bros. 2, the USA version, or Doki Doki Panic. Each is a little bit different, like you can't run in Doki Doki Panic, which makes it a whole lot harder. Now, going from a, an older analog type retro video game system to a digital television, like I mentioned, can be kind of a crapshoot. There are cheap AV to HDMI adapters that quite honestly, it just converts the ports. It introduces a lot of lag too. The colors don't look great. A lot of times you can get a, a buzz or something along those lines coming through the audio. Overall, not a great solution. Now, what we're gonna be talking about here today is this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, this is the RetroTINK 5X from Mike Chi. Now, in this video, we're gonna be focusing primarily on gameplay and how it looks. If you wanna check and see how it comes out of the box, how it comes outfitted, things along those lines, I will have that video link for you right up there. That is a separate video. Again, we're gonna be focusing mostly on gameplay. Now, like I mentioned, this is based on the designs from Mike Chi. And if you're familiar with his name, or if it sounds familiar, he is the guy behind things like the RetroTank 2X and the RetroTank SCART. These are great devices. I've absolutely loved them. And it is designed to go head to head with solutions such as the FrameMeister or the OSSC. Now, I've had an OSSC for over two years. And one of the things that I love about it is it works terrifically with my Sega systems. One of the things I hate about it, it works terribly with my Nintendo systems. The Super NES and the N64, there are timing issues that this system just doesn't play well with. And it's more this than those systems, where the Sega signals and whatnot, they can handle an off-sync kind of input need like what the OSSC he has, but it's still a very popular solution and has come down in price in recent years. Now, the reason why I mentioned price too, this is not an inexpensive solution. At nearly $300 at the initial release and probably $300 when it comes to the second and third batches, this is an investment to make your video games look better. But one thing this does that the OSSC does not is composite video sources. Why would that matter? Well, if you have an original NES, a top loader NES that's not modified like mine is here, this will not work for you. The OSSC has no way to handle composite video input, whereas the RetroTINK 5X handles composite like a champ. In fact, you can also spend for just $5 more, you can get what's called a SCART to composite adapter, and that will adapt the SCART input on the side and give you another component input if you're not gonna use SCART cables. Now, I do use SCART cables from Insurrection Industries. They work wonderfully. I also use HD RetroVision component video cables on a lot of my stuff. They work well too, and they are designed to be compatible with devices such as this. So what we're going to do in this video, like I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on gameplay. And we are going to do some comparisons between composite, component, S-Video, SCART, and even some HDMI modded systems. So let's go ahead, let's hook this up, and we are going to get started with the Famicom. So I mentioned Doki Doki Panic in the beginning, so we're going to start with... Doki Doki Panic. Now, I am actually using my Hyperkin Wireless Scout controller hooked up to my Sharp Famicom Twin. And you might be thinking, one of those things is not like the others. I have a tutorial, check it out on the channel and how you can go ahead and wire up an external control for your Famicom or your Sharp Famicom Twin. As you saw, I do have the output set to 1080p and we are gonna go start at chapter one one just because it's what we're all familiar with, excuse me. Now there is some overscan on the left hand side I am seeing and this is composite video and I'm just going straight into the system. God, this game looks great. Um, you can see the overscan on the left. I have played around uh, with some of the video settings on there. It never goes fully away, which is disappointing. That is a strength of the OSSC that you can add those masks uh, that help cover up stuff like that um, that I kind of wish that I could do here. So um, also you may notice some jail bars in the background. 
that is pretty common actually with the, uh, oh that was dumb, with the Famicom disk system uh, hooked up via composite. A lot of the older systems, I know the master system is really bad about that. Um, again, perfect example too, normally in Super Mario Bros. 2 I would have just run across there, but you can't run in Doki Doki Panic. It makes it a lot more of a challenge. But a lot of the same things are still here, such as, you know, the power-ups, the bombs, that would normally have been a Koopa shell that would have uh, gotten thrown. One of the pieces of the music here you can tell that has changed. Now, another thing too is, uh, because you can't run, I can't cross uh, that gap with anything other than uh, whoever would have been Luigi or the princess. I can't remember. This guy cannot do it. I know that. Uh, no, I think I gotta go back. It's been a while since I've played Super Mario Brothers 2. Back here? Nope. It's gotta be over here then. Even there you can hear the sound effect for the door is slightly different. Such a brilliantly fun game. And, I mean, one of the great things, again, is the fact that this is simply the straight composite output of the RetroTank 5X going straight into uh, my capture card and my TV and everything at 1080p. Now, it can't make it Super HD, um, but this is not bad. So, we are going to go on to another Famicom game real quick, just because I kind of want to stay with the 8-bit stuff. One thing I do want to show you real quick as we have Popeye here for the Famicom playing is what happens when you use the RetroTank 5X with the M Classic. So here the M Classic is turned off entirely and one thing is my capture card resets when I change different functions. So I'm going to change it now to the middle position. So here is the M Classic with the RetroTank 5X uh, in the middle position and I'll be honest I don't see much of a difference. We're gonna try the final third position. I believe this is retro mode. This might be my retro mode. I don't remember if the, the green or the blue is off the top of my head. And there is in the blue position, I'll pop on screen. Like I said, I don't remember if this is retro mode or if this is the standard mode. Uh, one of the things that never goes away is that white line overscan on the side. So for our testing purposes here, we're gonna use the M Classic turned off. One of the games I loved playing in the 80s in the arcade and I loved playing at home, Popeye. It's stupid simple, but it's one of those games I just love playing. So we'll go ahead and see if we can't catch all the hearts from olive oil. Now that scan line is still there on the left hand side, or the over line I guess you could call. Oh, I didn't realize Bluto could reach down, you dirty bugger. Well, we're gonna go ahead and take care of you here, my friend. All right, let's see if we can't punch this guy out. Got him. Oh, you did not throw that fire stuff intending to hit. Oh, I wasn't trying to climb up the ladder. There we go. One more time. Oh, game over. Well, now we're going to move on. I want to show you some footage that we captured from the uh, Sega Master System. This is using scar cables, and I mean, look how beautiful this is. This is actually really, really sharp. Up next, welcome to your doom and altered beast. Yes, this was available for the Sega Master System. And one of the things I want to do here too is I want to scroll through the different scan line options. So here you can see uh, where we are at with the 50% scan line. Now 90% and 100%. Now, I'm not a huge Scanline fan myself, but it's nice to see that you do have those options. Now, let's move up a generation to the Sega Genesis and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And one thing I do want you to notice at the bottom of the screen is that overscan, kind of like what we had on the left-hand side for the Famicom. Um, it's one of those things, I do wish that there was a mask or some way that we could eliminate that from being an issue. Next, I want to give you a side-by-side-by-side -side -by -side comparison of how Super Metroid looks on a Super Famicom. In the top left, that is the composite source. On the top right, that is using HD Retrovision component video cables. And on the bottom, you can see the SCART cables. Now, while composite looks a lot better than you would typically assume that it would look, SCART and the HD Retrovision cables look 
vastly superior. So up next we're going to move forward one generation in Nintendo consoles and take a look at F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64. And the great thing about this comparison is we have composite, S-Video, component video, and RGB SCART all coming out of the same system. And this is one of those things, again, you can see the difference in the depth of color and the performance of each of these. And the wonderful thing is that right out of the box, the N64 can do S-Video, and you can get a great color and palette and performance using S-Video out of this system. We're going to finish off our side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side comparisons here with the Nintendo GameCube and one of my favorite games of all time, Star Wars Rogue Leader 2 Rogue Squadron for the GameCube. It just looks beautiful. And again, we have composite, component, S-Video, and also HDMI that we are comparing to on here. So that's the wonderful thing about the GameCube is there's so many different ways that you can get great video out of it. Now for the component video cables, we are actually using Wii component cables going through the Eon Gaming GCHD. Yeah, you saw this one coming, right? Earthworm Jim. Uh, we're playing actually on my JVC XI, essentially a Sega Genesis or a uh, Mega Drive, really, using our RetroBit Sega controllers here. And we are still using uh, Insurrection Industries SCART cables on here, easy for me to say. And I am also, I do have it set to the uh, Genesis specific profile on here too, so it looks fantastic. Um, want to make sure too, no lag or latency. And again, going through this tire jump is one of the areas that I always find it uh, very telling if there's any lag, delay, or latency. So far, so good. I got a chance to interview Tommy Tellerico, who did the music for this game, who owns the rights to Earthworm Jim now. That, I, I still get geeked thinking about that. Uh, thanks to Tommy for spending some time with us. If you haven't checked out our interview with Tommy Tallarico, make sure you do so. Very cool cat. The Amico is coming. Still not sure I'm going to buy one. Um, I think Ginger's more geeked about it than I am. Thought I saw a crow up there. So Earthworm Jim on the Genesis JVCXI. Again, looking terrific. Playing great. I mean, the, the thing that I like about this too is look at just how rich and deep the colors are. The blacks and everything just look terrific. And this is Bonk's Adventure. I love this game. I love this system. Look how beautiful this looks. So this is going through an Insurrection Industries uh, uh, SCART cable via their spark plug adapter. Uh, all these cables, the uh, SCART cables from Insurrection Industries, the HD Retrovision cables, the plug, you can get them all at CastlemaniaGames.com. So very cool there. And I am using the Hyperkin, uh, what do they call this one? This is the Specialist. Um, I'll hit the run button. can't believe how clean this looks. Oh, only got one bounce there. Now I've recently also picked up uh, Super Bonk for the Super Famicom and um, I'm not sure what I think about it yet. Um, I've played a little bit of it and it's okay, um, but I think this is better, quite honestly. Just such an amazingly fun game. I mean, this is this is a system seller to me. I mean, this is one of those games that I specifically wanted to play um, and why I wanted a TurboGrafx-16 for the longest time. I wanted to play Bonk, even though I actually have it for the Famicom, uh, but the Famicom version does not look this good. Just the artwork and the style and the gameplay on this is just, it's so blasted good. It, it's one of those, I'm, I'm upset at myself now for not picking up a TurboGrafx-16, 
back in the day. Um, now, for those curious, there is no dedicated TurboGrafx-16 profile on here. Um, I'm basically using the one for the uh, Genesis, and that's what you're seeing here. So, um, looking very, very good. You know, I'm sure some of you are probably tired, though, of cartridge-based games. So why don't we move on to a system I don't know that I've featured more than a handful of times on the channel. Let's do the original Xbox. Self-proclaimed not an Xbox guy, but even I have to admit, Halo here, running through the RetroTINK 5X. Um, damn, this looks pretty good. Uh, and I suck, so I'm going to do new 001. Easy. And we're just going to see how it looks. But thus far, um, yeah, it looks really good. And I did do the left trigger, right trigger, left stick, right stick push in to make sure that we had the... Uh, best picture quality possible. I have not really played Halo, okay? But I will say for uh, for what it is, this is actually looking really, really good. And um, it is not a 1080p game. Uh, the Xbox can output 480p, and 720p, and 1080i. Like I say, I am not good at Halo or even first person shooters at all so i'm sure that i'm going to frustrate the daylights out of people who are experts at this game i would never consider myself to be one now i will say i have played this on my xbox one s and you know what i don't know that it looks much better than this because this looks terrific got him yep so here is halo on the original xbox and i think uh, pretty much anyone would agree this is looking fantastic. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a huge Xbox fan, but this is definitely a game that I really do want to spend uh, more time with. So uh, we are going to move on though to the PlayStation 2 and one of my favorite franchises of time. We're going to hang out with the Lombax. You all know how much I love Earthworm Jim. I dare say I. Enjoy and clank more and it could be just because there's more games uh, but it is an amazing series and this looks fantastic now one thing is the game i 99 percent sure that this is correct looking at the way ratchet and clank looked that this was done in four by three not 16 by nine so that is important to note <gasps> i think this is the planet where i have to meet skid mcmarks I've played this recently on the 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 PS5 remaster is just I mean granted this is we're we're, we're talking PS2 versus um, uh, you know a PS4 PS5 but still this looks phenomenal for what it is. Yeah, I will say that the controls were definitely not as good on this one as I remembered it being. Um, and the camera controls definitely leave a little bit to be desired. But overall, for a PlayStation 2 game, uh, this looks fantastic. I mean, I would say just as good, if not better, as the original Xbox, which, I mean, you'd kind of expect. It is a... pretty sure this is the... Uh, well, they would, would have been roughly the similar generation, I guess. But there's a good look at what Ratchet & Clank looks like on the PlayStation Two amazing game, great franchise. Again, if you are a fan of just just fun games, I mean that's the beautiful thing about Ratchet and Clank is it is just stupid fun. Um, this is just a great series to get involved with. Uh, final system we are going to go to. We're going to get our waggle on, and we are going to play the Wii. All right, we're gonna finish it off, like I said, with some Wago controls here, Super Mario Galaxy, and I mean, the game looks great. Now, I will say it is not as sharp as, um, you know, the 35th anniversary edition that's available on the Switch and everything, uh, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, uh, but I mean, this is really, really good looking 
and for the Wii. I mean, I don't know what Nintendo was thinking not putting HDMI in this, but man, this looks terrific. I mean, it's, it's not Super Mario Odyssey, but man, this is terrific. Now, this is one of those things, too, that I, you know, expect to have a lot of fun playing through uh, Resident Evil 4, because the Wii version, to me, was the best version of that game. Um, it was one of those games where the waggle controls made total sense. I mean, look at the detail in Peach's hair there, uh, the eyes and everything. Again, it's not as sharp as the Switch, I'm not claiming as such. But this is about the best I have ever seen the Wii look. And, and up until this point, I had used the uh, RetroTank Multi format with this. This looks great. This looks really outstanding. And best of all, too, I haven't really talked about a whole lot, except for Earthworm Jim. I haven't had any lag, any latency, any issues along those lines. And uh, I mean, look at Bowser there. Bowser looks terrific. Now, for this, I do have my Wii connected using official Nintendo component video cables. I think just playing around a little bit with the scan lines here too. There's 50%, 90%, 100 scan line, and then off. And you can see the scan lines, uh, slight benefit. You're getting rid of some of the jaggies around Mario, but we're going to set that aside. There we got another life for Mario. This is just such a beautiful game. I mean, yes, I have it for the Switch. And I've loved going back and playing it on the Switch. But you know what? This is the way to play this game. I mean, this is just one of those things where there's so many things I know people thought the waggle was a gimmick and whatnot. This is the way this game was designed to be played. And I love playing it with the Wii remotes. Uh, yeah, I can't say enough. I'm, I don't want to say I'm speechless about it, but it's one of those things that this is just the way to play. And I swore I was never going to be one of those video game purists that, well, you have to play it on the original hardware because I do see value in clone systems, but man, I love playing this on the original system looking as good as it does here. Alright, so I think we got those turned off. Gotta find, oh, there's another one right there I gotta turn off. Got that one. And this may be the last one. We might have one more. No, that was not the last one. There we go. I mean, it looks beautiful. It plays beautiful. So initial thoughts on the RetroTank 5X. First and foremost, the thing just works. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about the RetroTank 5X. It truly is plug and play. Now, I will say the remote, there have been times when I have gotten button presses confused as far as input versus um, uh, some of the other settings on here going back and forth between the home and the multifunction uh, button. That's on me. The more I use it, the more I will get used to it as well. Um, I do miss, quite honestly, the on-screen display on the unit itself that the OSSC offers because sometimes if you have an out-of-spec um, 
resolution that your TV does not recognize. For example, my TV doesn't touch uh, 1200 or 1400 whatsoever. I just get a blank screen. Um, so having something there would kind of help, you know, know what I'm on. Um, Above and beyond that, I know Dreamcast owners are probably disappointed that it doesn't do VGA input. For me, it is a minor inconvenience because I'm getting ready to VGA, or I'm sorry, I'm getting ready to HDMI mod my Dreamcast. So for me, no big deal. The other thing is more inputs. I'm gonna need more inputs for this. And that's one of those where getting like a G comp from castlemaniagames.com, eight composite input, or I'm sorry, eight component inputs go into it, gives me one output. Actually, I think that has two, I think it's an eight by two uh, that will allow me to go and have everything into one switch that can automatically go into this. It'll be a beautiful thing. Um, SCART works great. The HD Retrovision cables look great. And pretty much everything about this thing is terrific. It's not perfect though. Like I said, I do wish the on-screen display uh, was on here like on the OSSC. I do wish there were additional profiles on here like for the Wii here, I just have to use a generic 16x9. Same thing with the Xbox, I'd use a generic profile on there. For the PS2, I use the PS1 settings. Um, so I do wish that there were additional profiles available or at least a way to go ahead and set something in there. Also on Sega systems, having that overscan on the bottom of the screen, not ideal. It is something that I wish that there would be some kind of a mask or something that you could apply just like on the OSSC. But unlike the OSSC, works flawlessly with my Nintendo systems. And unlike some of the earlier RetroTINX uh, systems or adapters that were out there, it works just fine with Sega systems. So uh, overall, two enthusiastic thumbs up for me on this. Now it's time to wrap things up. So in the end, what do I think of the RetroTINX 5X? Well, take a look at what I have in my hands. Original RetroTINX, the multi-format, the SCART, the Pro, my OSSC. I'm happy to say the RetroTank 5X is replacing all of these devices with one convenient device. It's brilliant. It's absolutely stunning how good the results are. And it's as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. And by that, I mean, if you want to dive in and play around with you know, the scan lines and, and the RGB and, and this, that, and the other thing, you can do that or you can just plug it in and play and enjoy the results. Now, it's not perfect and it's not flawless like I mentioned just a few moments ago. I do wish that it had a way to apply a mask to the either top and bottom or to the sides of the display, much like what the OSSC can do to hide overscan. That is one thing I wish that this could do. Uh, above and beyond that, I found myself hitting the wrong buttons on the remote. That's gonna come with time and familiarity, me kind of getting used to what this system can do in its entirety. Beyond that though, it just worked. It worked on Nintendo systems. It worked on Sega systems. It worked on Sony systems. It worked on I played the Xbox in a video. That's how good this is. And I have to admit, Halo looked gorgeous. I was really impressed with how good the original Halo looked. Now, this is what I would call an investment type of item. At $275 to $300, it ain't cheap. It really isn't. And I bought mine. So just so you know, I am invested in this to make sure that I could bring you out there a quality video and a good review on the RetroTank 5X. It's an investment. I probably you know, keep most of my RetroTanks, but I'll be getting rid of my OSSC. After I do a comparison video side by side comparing the OSSC with the RetroTank 5X, stay subscribed to the channel that will be coming in a future update. Also, for those of you who had the Mersai M Classic, you don't need it with this. What the RetroTank 5X does out of the box, the M Classic, really not necessary. Now there are some additional features that I did not use. For example, the 240p downscaling to connect to a CRT. I didn't do that. 
I, just not something that I will probably ever use, but I know that is an interesting feature out there that Mike has baked into it. Now, from the box, the way we're looking at right now, it, in May of 2021, the first batch of units have completely sold out. Mike and Mrs. Retrotink are working hard to get that first batch completely shipped out. At the time of this filming, they're about 25 to 40% through the first batch of orders. They're hoping to get through them in the coming days. So thank you to Mike, thank you to Mrs. Retrotank for everything you are doing to make sure that the community can get their hands on these items. Now, one thing I did not cover earlier on is the fact that the capture card that I'm using, I've used two different ones to capture footage from the Retrotank 5X. I have used the Genki Shadowcast. I haven't played, just captured look good and then with the footage that you've seen here this is using my Hapog PVR60 Pro. I don't anticipate any issues whatsoever with any capture card that's out there. Now one thing I will say with my Hapog when it would change resolution it would stop recording. So like on Star Wars uh, when it was going through on the GameCube and changing resolution I had to start and stop the capture on that. With the Genki Shadowcast not an issue. That's specific to the capture card, so something to be aware of there. Now, uh, Mike will have more of these available in June or July of 2021. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, we've gone through a lot here, so I'm sure people have plenty of questions. Please, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also feel free to email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Send me a message on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions. GK. Now one thing with this, you are going to want to hook up multiple devices to it. And like I mentioned earlier that over at castlemaniagames.com, he has a component 8x2, I believe it's the G-SCOMP is what it's called. There's also the G-SCART that will do the same thing, but for SCART input. So something you may want to look into as well. I have AV switcher boxes, like I have my, my Cyclone one here that I will be, or uh, yeah, a Cyclone that I'll be using. I've got my... Um, there's a Magnavox. I've got a Radio Shack one though, that I've been using. I'm going to need to connect more things into this, so I will be picking up probably uh, one of those G-SCOMPs pretty soon. That's going to be another hefty investment, but something that will definitely be worthwhile. Now, uh, one of the cool things over there at CastleManiaGames.com is if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you'll save 10% off of most items on the website. Now, if you are looking for things like reviews of other products from RetroTank, different cables that we've used, our unboxing. Those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.